An excerpt from Shakespeare Beyond Science, When Poetry Was the World, by Sky Gilbert. Chapter 1. Bardolatry. Shakespeare's work was not very popular in the years following his death. Even after the reopening of the theatres during the Restoration, Shakespeare's work didn't dominate the stage. In 1668, John Dryden stated that Beaumont and Fletcher were more popular than Shakespeare, and that two of their plays were acted yearly for every one of Shakespeare's. Shakespeare's supremacy was not established until the middle of the 18th century with the advent of Bardolatry. Until then, Shakespeare's reputation was equal to, if not less than, that of the poets Edmund Spencer and Philip Sidney. Shakespeare's inability to hold the public's attention for the first hundred years after his death is directly related to an attitude to language that invaded England starting in the middle of the 17th century. It is an attitude that persists to this day. The first meeting of the Royal Society in London was an informal one in November 1660. They gathered after a lecture by architect Christopher Wren. The Society's complete name was the Royal Society of London for the Improving Natural Knowledge, and their motto was Nullius in Verba. A colloquial translation would be, take nobody's word for it. It's important not to underestimate the significance of this motto. Ostensibly, the organization was dedicated to practical experimentation as a testing ground for facts, and it is usually taken for granted that the focus of the Royal Society was to ensure that practical experiments were useful, taking its cue from Francis Bacon, whom they celebrated as a spiritual, if not actual, founder. Isaac Newton became a member of the organization in 1703, which wished to serve as a model for the state in terms of function. So, Nullius in Verba says it all. The motto represented a major cultural shift from trusting words to a skepticism about them, and from a fictional representation of the natural world to direct observation of the real world before our eyes.